guys, this is Krimli again with another pen review and today I have an interesting pen for you that is made by Hugo Boss. I have gotten this pen from papierundstift.de in Germany. Uh, thanks very much guys there at papierundstift.de for sending me this pen. I've been approached by them and they said, hey, did you know that Hugo Boss does make pens, fountain pens, ballpoint pens, rollerball pens and so on. I said, no, I do only know Hugo Boss as a manufacturer of apparel and fragrances and so on. I wasn't aware of the fact that they do also make uh, pens as accessories. And Papier und Stift.de told me, you want to try one out? I said, sure, I want to try one out. Never tried it. And here we are with a pen that is called the Pure Tire Full Feather Halter, which means fountain pen costing 139 euro. Um, I'm discussing the price at the end of the review. It doesn't say any nib with here. It's a medium nib, a medium steel nib that I got on this pen. I did a little bit of research online. This model here, uh, I don't know about the other Hugo Boss fountain pens, they make a bunch more, uh, comes only in a medium nib. So that's what it is. Let's look at the packaging. As said, it's the Hugo Boss Pure Tire for 139 euro. It's a black cardboard box saying in glossy black Hugo Boss. You can slide out another cardboard box that also says Hugo Boss, also in glossy letters. It has a magnet closure flap. You open the pen box like this. The pen was in a plastic sleeve. Then inside there is another matte black little paper thing saying certificate of authenticity, blah, blah, blah. The printing quality in here is not Hugo Boss-ish. Fades out here on the sides. That could probably look a little bit nicer, uh, look a little bit more high quality. Uh, and you know, other than that, there's nothing in the box. The pen came with one ink cartridge. It didn't come with a converter or anything like that. There's no more paperwork uh, describing what the pure tire is all about. Um, I did a little bit of research online. The only thing that I could find that uh, it sort of is a nod towards Hugo Boss relationship with cars. Um, so that's basically everything that I could find. Let's look at the pen. First impression, this pen is so deep black that it basically does absorb all the surrounding light. Here in the camera, you can basically not see the pen. So it's very, very dark, deep, dark black. A matte cap, uh, a matte black metal cap here and a soft rubber barrel and a little bit of a metal end point here. Overall shape of this pen is tapered, it's wider here, slimmer here, and tapers down all the way. So it's a tapered pen. Let's bring the pen a little bit closer and have a look at the cap first. There is a finial up here or like a top of the cap that has nothing on, just black metal. It has a small clip, the pen. If you look at the other Hugo Boss pens, they all sort of like sport a very short, wide clip. That seems to be some kind of a signature design element. It's a very short clip. The clip is spring-loaded, but it's extremely stiff. I tried to put it into a pen pouch that worked. I tried to put it into a shirt pocket, and I was sort of scared that I'm going to rip the shirt pocket off. So shirt pocket, maybe not. Pen pouch, not a problem. Um, the cap is a bit bulky or bulbous, so to say. It's a bit thicker here in the middle. Um, very decent Hugo Boss engraved or etched into the barrel here. So no large Hugo Boss logo or anything on the pen. This here is the only branding. And because it's such a dark matte black, you can actually barely see it. And then you have the barrel that does actually look like a car tire. It is rubber and 
it does smell like a car tire um not that i would smell on car tires frequently but i've recently changed a bicycle tire a new tire that i bought and that smelled the same so yes it does smell like tire rubber that's sort of like the iconic design element of that pen and you can see that if the pen is angled into the light in just the right way and uh, as said because it's such a dark color um, if you angle the pen slightly different it just looks like a black tapered pen and then in the end you have like a small end here um, and as said that is metal as well we then have a pop on cap uh, it's a bit interesting because I think that actually when you snap the cap back on it does sort of sound as if you close a car door It's probably not the Mercedes S class, but uh, you know, I mean it's metal on metal So maybe it's also just me fantasizing because it has this like not towards cars Anyway, that's what it is. This cap here is extremely heavy which is why it also sort of a bit uncomfortable to have the pen in a shirt pocket just because the cap is so top heavy and pushes the, the shirt pocket a little bit forward the pen itself isn't that heavy at all just an average uh, weighted pen you then have a number five steel nib uh, as said in medium it doesn't have any size designation on it it just says Hugo Boss and has a little bit some line work that yeah sort of like fits Hugo Boss I think if you look at their website and their overall design language that fits it very well it has kind of a weird section uh, very tapered um, with uh, sort of like a ring here that's not a rubber o-ring that would help with grip or something like that it's just like this all the same material when I looked at that section in the beginning, I didn't really understand it. I was like, how am I supposed to write with that pen? Am I supposed to hold it here or up here or maybe even up here on the barrel where some people do tend to hold their pens? So I didn't really get it and I thought it's going to be highly uncomfortable. However, I was pleasantly surprised that somehow I seem to find a quite good grip right here. Sometimes I hold it a bit down here. Sometimes I hold it almost here on that step down, which is kind of large, but somehow surprisingly not very disturbing you could also hold it up here in the on the barrel which to me personally is too far away from the nib too far away from the paper so i do hold that pen here and you know even for taking like you know meeting notes in a one hour meeting or something like that surprisingly doesn't get very uncomfortable as you can see in my hand uh, it's not the smallest of pens. I'm gonna do a size comparison in a second it's pretty well balanced lays very nice in the hand no complaints here. The cap could post. It wouldn't post very, very securely onto that uh, uh, rubber barrel here, but it would also not exactly fly off. But since the cap is extremely heavy, sort of like probably like three quarters of the weight of the pen or so, it becomes very top heavy. So I wouldn't post that pen. But um, I think, as you can see, it also doesn't have to be posted. The pen then opens like this. It came with an ink cartridge. I already wrote one ink cartridge dry, so I refilled it with another ink cartridge. One thing that I find a bit of a pity is that you don't get a converter um, with a Hugo Boss pen for almost 140 euro, but well, other pen manufacturers also don't see the necessity to put a converter into such pens. So it's probably what it is. Size comparison to my standard size reference pen, Lamy Safari, two black pens right here. I think it's safe to say that the Hugo Boss pen is around three millimeters longer when capped. When uncapped, the Hugo Boss pen is around three to four millimeters shorter than the Lamy Safari. I won't post them because it doesn't make sense with those pens. Here you see a nib and section comparison. I mean, it's hard to actually tell you the width of that section because it does taper so much, but it's sort of the grip width of a Lamy Safari. So I think overall it's safe to say that if you get along with a Lamy Safari, you should be getting along with that pen as well. Let's do a writing sample in the end. Hugo Boss, pure tire, a 
medium nib. Yeah, I mean, it's a steel nib, as you saw right here. The nib was skipping up here. The nib was skipping a little bit down here. It's something that doesn't happen all that often, but like, to be honest, when I wrote with the pen, uh, yeah, you see here, it also doesn't start up directly. Um, it does happen here and there that it does skip, which I find a little bit annoying, uh, especially with the pen at that price point. It's not a 50 euro. Now he has skipped again up here. You saw that. It's not a, and here it also didn't write. I mean, some skips here. There was another skip up here. Another skip here. I'm skipping right here so yeah I mean it's it's not the greatest writing experience on the planet and it was the same with the other ink that I had in there before other than that if the pen writes uh, it's a medium wet pen didn't come up straight away here as well unfortunately it's not a gusher it's not a super dry pen and uh, writing experience wise it's kind of smooth it's a little bit, gives you a little bit of feedback. It's not very feedbacky. I think it's like you saw there was like some skipping here. There was some skipping here again. So, well, yeah, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's this example here, but um, overall, this pen does not write very well, unfortunately. Uh, last but not least, I think it's a pretty cool pen design. I think it does have uh, very much of a niche to it. I think you gotta be like a car fan or uh, automobile aficionado in order to like really want to buy this pen. It does not speak to me personally. I'm not such a, such a big car fan, but I can see how people who are into cars and into racing sports or motorcycles or something like that would really like that pen. Um, let's discuss price in the end. As said, the pen retails for 139 euro. Well, is that cheap? Is that expensive? Guys, I did a little bit of a research, some price comparison. Akaveco Elegance is also a cartridge converter filled pen. Um, does cost 79 euro. Also steel nib, all these pens here. Faber-Castell Ambition costs 75 euro. Uh, Faber-Castell Emotion Wood. So then you have wood material, ex more expensive material is 98 euro. And a Pelican M200, which would be a piston filler, would be around 115 to 120 euro. So you can get pens that probably write even better. As said, I don't know if the others write. That here didn't write very well, unfortunately. For 50 euro less roundabout or 40 euro less but in all fairness we also have to say that uh, the diplomat skyline or uh, the aurora duo card or a carandash ecridor does cost the same or even a little bit more so well i think the price is not outrageous it's also not exactly inexpensive but it's probably as much as you can ask for this pen maxing it out a little bit, so to speak. Guys, that was that with this review of the Hugo Boss Pure Tire. Thank you very much again to papierundstift.de for introducing me to Hugo Boss pens. Appreciate that very much. Enabled me to shoot this review for all you guys out there. Hope it was useful and I see you at the next review. Ciao, ciao.